Alright, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, and I do hope you lot are doing well today. I really do hope that. Now, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to this video, welcome back to this video, no that's not right. Welcome to this video, which is a Chelsea news video, where I'll be talking about three stories for you guys today. An article in The Athletic did confirm that Chelsea did try to secure Jadon Sancho this January transfer window, although he wasn't available, they will go back in for him in the summer as the main priority target which I guess is some good news. Tammy Abraham's recent comments on him playing as the number nine at Chelsea, a few comments about Edison Cavani and Olivier Giroud as well, from Tammy Abraham that is. And the big one, apparently Frank Lampard is done with Kepa Aretha Balaga if you are to believe the Spanish media outlets. Obviously he was dropped against Leicester but apparently he doesn't like him, just doesn't like him. Apparently he never has from the outside looking in, but in terms of a character clash, there's a something there apparently. And I don't know if this is true, but we're gonna talk about the story and perhaps speculate moving forwards. But before we do that, I wanna urge you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, please do subscribe. Hit the bell notifications icon, because apparently that is important. If you wanna help me out, why not like this video as well? And feel free to follow me on Instagram at Football Yannick to hang out with me on Instagram Lives. All right, let's get into it. So yeah, pretty much confirmation on the Jadon Sancho story. Loads of people are obviously shocked there was no movement in the January transfer window. It was a weird one. Uh, apparently there was moves late on in the window for a striker like Salomon Rondon and a couple of others, but Chelsea couldn't go over the line or perhaps even rejected. There was indeed contact with Dries Merton's party and of course a lot of negotiations with Edison Cavani. Nothing got over the line in the end, but it's interesting because they did make a strong attempt to sign Jadon Sancho this January, which is peculiar because I thought they just saw it as a, a non, I just didn't think they'd try. Like, we'll get him in this summer. It's not gonna happen now. Let's just carry on. But apparently they went all in and they tried to get Jadon Sancho. Reporters and journalists around Chelsea Football Club have always maintained that Chelsea will, or we're, we're gonna go in hard and will go in hard for Jadon Sancho and absolutely break their transfer record, maybe even double it. Of course, the transfer record at the moment is on Kepa Riza Balaga, more on him later, at about 71, 72 million pounds. Understandably, it was too difficult to get Jadon Sancho over the line when he's having such a magnificent individual season for Dortmund out in the Bundesliga. He's the youngest ever player to get to 25 goals in German football, which is insane. He's literally making history out there. You're not gonna stop him from doing that. So Chelsea maintain they will go in for him in the summer very, very hard indeed. And they really by then should have the money to do so. So Chelsea did not get a striker this January transfer window. I'm sure you've noticed. Tammy Abraham will remain the main man throughout till the end of the season. He's basically, spoken out a little bit on this he did say that it's a it would have been good for Cavani to come because it would have been an opportunity for him to learn against this absolute superstar I think Tammy Abraham's quite media savvy but is he really unhappy Cavani didn't come I'm not so sure he pretty much said he, it would have been good to learn off him but now I'll just continue on putting uh, the hard work in as Chelsea's main man I've got no problem with it it's all good. Tammy Abraham was also recently quoted in regards to some stuff he said about Olivier Giroud. And I quote, He's like a big brother to me. His attitude has been great. In training, we're always doing finishing competitions and we have a lot of competition after training as well. It's nice to have that because I've grown up watching him. He is a fantastic striker and has been encouraging to many of the young lads. So again, saying all the right things, but it's nice and I genuinely do believe there is a positive camaraderie around the Chelsea camp even with the players that are not playing at the moment. When Tammy Abraham was asked if he was surprised to see the World Cup winner get so few opportunities this season, Abraham added, you never know, these things happen in football. Sometimes you're on the top and sometimes you're not. It's about staying professional and as focused as you can and keep trying. By the way, I'm reading these quotes from football.london. I should probably let you know that. The failure to sign a new striker led to the added responsibility for Abraham who had to play through Saturday's game with an ankle injury requiring painkillers. Now, at this point you're thinking, probably should have maybe played Giroud. A lot of people were calling out for Giroud actually because of the sort of injustice to him. But last time we started Giroud, we all remembered what happened there and what didn't happen. I think he didn't touch the ball and it was just, it felt like, I did a match review on the game, I can't remember which game it was, but it was literally like playing with 10 players. Not so much for a four of his own, but it just didn't work and it was painful. I really do rate Giroud, but generally, but this, 
just didn't seem like it was going to work. Anyway, let's finish off these quotes here. Tammy Abraham insists that he will not feel any more pressure than before as Chelsea attempt to keep hold of the fourth place spot and the Champions League tie against Bayern Munich to come. Tammy Abraham said, I think playing for a club like Chelsea, there's always going to be pressure, he said. For me, it's about being in the right place at the right time and believing in myself and my abilities as well. I am sure I will score a few more. I like the pressure. I play under pressure. There you go. <laughs> so, some positive words from young Tammy Abraham there. Pretty much saying, look man, I don't know what's going on with Volley G, I've always watched him. He's got, let's be real man, Tammy Abraham's got to be stoked on that, hasn't he? Like, he, Cavalli didn't come in, Olivier Chiru is not playing, he knows he's the main man. Provided he gets like, what, another seven goals in the remainder of the season, he's golden. Hopefully he gets more than that. Chelsea, I don't think it needs to all be on his shoulders. He's highlighted more, I think, because the other players aren't scoring. Wingers aren't scoring. Midfielders aren't scoring. When people start chipping in more from around the pitch, the pressure might leave it a little bit, and he himself might score more goals. You know how football works, man. When everyone's chill and in flow, things work better. So we'll see what happens. I mean, this is it now for the rest of the season, so... Best of luck to Tammy. Right, Kepa reads a Balaga, the big story. Apparently, a fallout with Frank Lampard. Apparently, Frank Lampard doesn't like him, if you are to believe Spanish reports. But let me read you some quotes here. According to Spanish outlet Cope, or Copy, who knows the pronunciation, Lampard has lost faith in the Spain international and may not start him again for the rest of the campaign. That's what the Spanish news outlet is reporting. The Blues boss was thinking about making a change in goal for a while, but only just made it because of the whopping £71 million pounds the, the club spent to buy the goalkeeper from Atletico Bilbao. Obviously, it's a club record, and that sort of makes it hard to make the decision. To be honest, a lot of managers would have bottled it and still not dropped him, but Frank Lampard at this point is like, I'm dropping this guy. I think he, there might be a clash of personalities as well. Certainly, some reports are implying that. Lampard claims he was not on the lookout for a new goalkeeper, but insists Kepa needs to improve. And the recent omission poses a major warning to the Spaniard. Mm. The Blues boss said, I'm not looking at signing a new goalkeeper now. I'm aware of the criticism, but I'm not affected by it. He said this in his press conference recently, of course. Although apparently when he came in, he wasn't happy looking at Kepa from the outside looking in, and he did want new goalkeeping staff coaches to sort of change him, I guess. Here are some more telling quotes. Kepa knows there have been mistakes that have cost goals. That's the nature of it, and he needs to improve. Mm. Since the move to Chelsea, Kepa has... <laughs> okay, right. Since the move to Chelsea, Kepa has made a grand total of 85 appearances and has conceded 94 goals. For a team like Chelsea, that's probably not good enough. I mean, it's not good enough. <laughs> he has played 24 times in the Premier League this season and has also started all six of the Champions League games. Right, what does this mean? Well, there's been loads and loads of stories recently. Ones that I've reported on as well about Frank Lampard wanting a replacement goalkeeper. I think at this point, he, he needs to be ruthless and it takes a lot of balls to drop a 72 million pound goalkeeper who is actually talented by the way just in stinky form and perhaps not in the player profile or goalkeeper profile that Frank Lampard wants. Bringing in Willy Caballero isn't the worst thing in the world but he is very much a second team goalkeeper and can he see Chelsea through the rest of the season? I'm not so sure you know. Maybe this is just a smart piece of disciplinary action from Frank Lampard. Kepa has a great deal of self-belief as we saw in the cup final when he refused to come off when Sarri tried to substitute him. Great deal of self-belief and maybe Frank Lampard needs to just knock him down a few pegs and so he can build himself back up because getting dropped is huge. Um, <laughs> Will he bring him in for the next game? Maybe. You know what? Dropping him was like, right, Frank's done, doing something here. He's dropped him for a big game away at Leicester, top four rivals. Statement. But to be honest, the next game is almost more important than this one because the next game will tell you, oh my God, he's dropped Kepa. He's not like punishing Kepa or trying to knock him down a few pegs or give Willy Caballero a chance. It will be like, no, no, he's dropped Kepa. So what did Chelsea do? They like make a gargantuan loss in the summer and he tries to bring in like a decent Premier League proven goalkeeper. I'm not so sure. To be honest, you couldn't really sell Kepa. You'd have to loan him um, with maybe an option to buy just to for someone to take him. And, you know, you'd loan him for what? To just take his wages, maybe a loan fee. I'm not so sure. 
and then the option to buy would probably have to be best part of or just over half what Chelsea bought him. Chelsea would make a loss regardless on Kepa Rita Balaga, even if he had a really positive loan spell. Or who knows, maybe he does go on a loan spell, has an absolute elite season, then Chelsea bring him back. I mean, Thibaut Courtois had an amazing season at Atletico Madrid, Chelsea brought him back, won the Premier League, you know. So who knows, maybe that could work the same with Kepa. Point being, there is a problem there. I've read out the stats to you on previous videos. There's, he's massively been underperforming and <laughs> If, but the thing is, it's like, if Willy Caballero is the answer, what is the question? Do you know what I mean? It's almost like Bolka, we should have kept in Marin Bolka, the um, Polish goalkeeper who's granted not playing for PSG now, probably just earning loads of wages, but he looks really, really good and probably could have done a job for Chelsea at this point. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's all pretty dramatic and I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on the Kepa situation. If you were Chelsea coach Frank Lampard, what would you do about Kepa? Would you drop him to the end of the season? Would you drop him for like two more games, rotate him back in? You know, it's a, it's a difficult one. What does he do? Because the profile of games now are all pretty high throughout the end of the season. Does he like drop him then just throw him back in against Bayern Munich? Do you know what I mean? So let me know what you do, get down in the comment section below and express your thoughts and opinions on this. If you've enjoyed the content today guys, please do like the video, remember to subscribe if you are new, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at FootballYannick. And that's it from me guys, you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck, I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk, outline my lines, I rap through thought, body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby.